Welcome to episode 161 of the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. I'm Aaron Brightman coming to you Thursday, September 7th, two days away from game two for Rutgers versus Temple. Wanted to focus on today's episode on really what I think is the best and probably only way that Temple can beat Rutgers this weekend, and that's through the air. Uh, they're going to need to pass the ball and be very successful uh, to, in doing that to be able to win the game. They averaged under two yards per carry in the win against Akron last week. Rutgers looked really good against the run last week against Northwestern. Temple, pass-heavy team, E.J. Warner, quarterback back, uh, played relatively well against Rutgers last year as a true freshman. He's now a sophomore. He threw it 49 times in the season opener, completing 29, so right at that 60% mark. Uh, he did have two touchdown passes. But what I think is notable and what I kind of wanted to break down is just in terms of how the Temple uh, pass offense matches up against the Rutgers pass defense. So for one, the biggest thing is that Temple utilizes a lot of guys in the pass game. They do uh, Edward Sidi, the running back, had both touchdowns in the pass game. So uh, they had five different players targeted in uh, for six or more uh, targets in the pass game on Saturday. Uh, that includes Sidi, who uh, had five receptions on six targets. You had uh, their two wide receivers, three wide receivers, Targeted uh, Zay Baines, uh, targeted seven times, had three catches for 43 yards. Then you had Ahmad Anderson Jr., seven targets. He had four catches, 65 yards. Uh, and then Dante Wright, the transfer from Colorado State. Shiano talked about him this week. He was targeted 14 times, had nine catches, 83 yards. And then the tight end was focused quite a bit as well. David Martin Robinson, eight targets, four catches, 51 yards. So Warner threw for 299 yards, so he, he threw 50 times, uh, 300 passing yards, but five different players between running back, tight end, and receiver focal points in the pass game. So all three phases, basically, which brings us to the pass coverage for Rutgers uh, in the game against Northwestern. And, yes, I, I now am going to be incorporating pro football focus player grades into my coverage uh, it's very similar. To, it's the football equivalent of Ken Palm. So that's going to certainly help. But looking at uh, the grades from uh, Sunday against Northwestern, uh, the, the best players in pass coverage ended up being the linebackers and the safeties. So uh, Flip Dixon was uh, graded the highest of everybody, uh, the new safety from uh, Minnesota. He graded very high in pass coverage, 75.7. You had Deion Jennings. So, I, you know, we've talked about this in the past, but the linebackers for Rutgers, the biggest change in Jennings and Tyreen Powell, and Tyreen Powell had a couple uh, great pressures. He had that sack. He had a big hit that forced the interception. Um, but they're both very good in pass coverage, and it shows up on the player grades. They were both in the top five. Uh, Jennings was number two at 74.1. And then you had uh, Igbenus and Loyal, three and four. Uh, all, all four of those guys above 70%, and then Tyreen Powell uh, in, in the high 60s at number five. Uh, that is going to be key in this game, I think, because, uh, like I said, Sidi, the running back, got the ball quite a bit, uh, was targeted uh, six times out of the backfield, and then you had the tight end, two targeted eight times. So the linebackers are going to be forced uh, into pass coverage in this game and I think that's that's a strength of Rutgers. I think that that's going to be uh, a real key in this in terms of how they are able to neutralize uh, Temple in that short to, to medium pass game. Uh, in terms of the safeties, you know, it's great to see that Flip Dixon, uh, Igbe Newsen, and Loyal all represented pretty well. They all did some other things as well. We saw Loyal with the, uh, the third down uh, blitz that led to a sack. Uh, he had a, a, a big hit later in the game as well. Um, but Igbenusen and Dixon were solid. So uh, obviously preventing uh, big plays in the pass game is key as well. Dante Wright is certainly the big play threat. I uh, had a pretty good career at Colorado State, and he's the guy they're going to look at in terms of being able to produce big in the pass game. And really, I, I just I don't see Temple having a chance to, to pull the upset unless they can they can hit it big in the pass game either deep or 
kind of pick apart the Rutgers defense uh, through, you know, uh, short to, to medium pass passes in the middle of the defense uh, with their tight end, uh, getting Sidi out in open space and, and, and running after the catch uh, out of the backfield. That, that's going to be the key. EJ Warner, he's, he's six foot tall. I actually thought he was a little bit smaller than that. So uh, you know that Rutgers is going to want to generate the pass rush, which they did extremely well against Northwestern. The defense got a great grade overall, 80.1, which is really high. Uh, the uh, pass rush was 71.5, which is in the green. They tackled really well, 83.1, but their coverage was high, 80.4. So their pass coverage grade as a, as a defense was really high, um, but Temple Temple uses a lot of guys in their pass passing game. So I think the depth of the Rutgers defense will certainly be uh, part of that. You know, can Max Melton and Robert Longerbeam be the shutdown corners that we think they can be? Obviously, they need to be that to a certain degree in Big Ten play. They both had interceptions against Northwestern, uh, but I think this is a good test. Uh, between Anderson and uh, Wright, those are going to be two, you know, pretty solid receivers for Melton and, uh, excuse me, Melton and Longerbeam in pass coverage, uh, being able to limit their ability to to register big plays. Obviously, you have the safeties that can come up and and, and make some plays, make some big hits, uh, limit yards after the catch, uh, you know potentially sneak up and, and and produce some interceptions, but it's really going to be on Melton and longer beam to be able to frustrate Wright and Anderson for Temple. Obviously the pass rush is key. The defensive line was very disruptive. I, I think this is just a game where the, the depth of the Rutgers defense can overwhelm Temple um, and be able to physically outplay them. I think that, that that's going to be everything. And I think, you know, we'll see how Temple approaches it. Are they going to come out throwing right away? They fell behind quite a bit uh, against Akron. That's partly why they threw so many times. But I think it's going to be hard for them to run the ball against Rutgers. Uh, they, were, they were very good uh, last week, uh, you know, in, their, in the run defense. And held uh, Northwestern, it was, it was just over two yards per carry. Uh, and like I said, Temple did not, you know, exceed two yards per carry against Akron, which is obviously a, you know, concerning sign for them. So uh, it's it's really going to come down to uh, how many points and and how many how how can Temple sustain drives in the pass game without much of a run game? And it's going to come down to pass coverage as as much as it's going to come down to the defensive line being disruptive. It's I, I think it's it's pretty equal in this game. And this is a game where, you know, I think you have to look at Melton saying, hey, you know, are you going to be that legit number one shutdown corner that we think you can be? Uh, and he needs to be that against Dante Wright this week. Uh, and then you have Longer Beam, uh, who I, I've been real high on. And I think, uh, you know, he's not as physical a guy. He's a little bit of a different player, a little more cerebral, finesse. But he's just really good instincts, really good timing in terms of defending the ball uh when it's coming to his receiver so uh both of those guys are gonna have opportunities to make a big impact and then the safeties you know can they uh can they deliver big hits uh can they prevent any potential big plays if the temple receivers get by those cornerbacks uh you know eric rogers got some run at cornerback uh in the first game uh, so we'll see how much he gets out there, but you know, they're going to be in the, they, they play the nickel pretty much exclusively now, and they're going to be in the nickel the whole game. And I think a real key, as I, I kind of touched on in the beginning is the linebackers ability for, for pass, pass coverage and how good Powell and Jennings are in that regard. So I don't think you're going to see a lot of blitz blitzes in this game. We didn't see a ton against Northwestern either. Uh, so can the defensive line, can they wear down the, the temple offensive line? with their depth, uh, especially in the second half. We saw that against Northwestern. And can that lead to some bad throws from E.J. Warner? And can Rutgers capitalize with their safeties? Uh, and, and you know, Melton and uh, Longerbeam, yet again, can they come up with interceptions the second week in a row? So for me, that's – I, I, I want to say I really feel like that's the big game because the key to the game. Because without 
Temple being effective in the pass game, I don't see how they can they can upset Rutgers unless the offense just implodes, uh, turns it over quite a bit. Temple profits, you know, in short yardage, short field situations. Uh, obviously, that would be a disaster. Uh, but if and then that's I think going to play into the offensive game plan, right? You're going to see. Obviously, it's no secret. Rutgers wants to run the clock. They want time of possession. They want to sustain drives. They want to keep the ball as long as possible. And I think the more that they do that, uh, they put pressure on the Temple offense. Uh, and I think they could press in that second half. If they find themselves even down, you know, one to two scores, uh, say it's 17 7, Temple's going to know they have to get, you know, they need to score through the air. And that's when the defensive line, I think, uh, could wear down Temple and really uh, be disruptive and, and force mistakes by Temple. So I think that that's. Uh, going to be a, a big part of this game. Uh, just making sure I didn't miss anything that I wanted to cover. Uh, but overall, I think, you know, Temple's an interesting challenge. I think it's it's a good week two challenge. I think they're actually, I think their offense is definitely better than Northwestern. So it's a good ramp up game uh, for the defense. And again, going back to the offense, being able to, you know, string together sustained drives and time of possession, it's going to keep the defense fresh. So, what was interesting in game one was, you know, Rutgers was aggressive on offense, but they also were able to, you know, eat a lot of clock while doing that, you know? So I think, and, and I talked about this yesterday, the offense taking that next step, being able to stack solid performances back to back, uh, obviously whims it, uh, the offensive line, is that rotation going to tighten up uh, the running back room? How's that? They're going to look uh, the receivers. I think it'd be interesting to see, you know, how much, how much more of a priority is Ian Strong going to be in the past game? Is Jaquay Jackson going to play more after getting kind of dinged up last game with that big hit? He did come back to, to run block. Chris Long, you know, he got dinged up a little bit too. So those are three guys I'm looking for in the past game for Rutgers. Uh, but it's all, all going to tie together in terms of, you know, and, and Rutgers defense needs to set the tone from the stretch and not allow Temple to get going in that past game. You don't want EJ Warner to get confidence. You don't want them to produce any big plays early to get some momentum and as a team build confidence and potentially lead Wimsett to, to press a little bit. Uh, Rutgers is not going to panic in terms of getting out of their game plan, uh, but the more that uh, the defense can limit Temple in the pass game, the harder it's going to be for them to win. Thanks for watching and listening to the Scarlet Faithful podcast once again, and I will talk to you tomorrow.